Hi, this is James Gordon of Tour Library here with the second book review in the Starpunk Trilogy. The book I will be discussing about today is William Gibson's Count Zero, the sequel to his first novel, Neuromancer. Count Zero was first published in 1986 by Ace Books. This edition, also published by Ace, was um, published in 2006. Now, when I was um, rereading this novel, it was a blur to me, because I don't remember much um, what ha happens in this novel um, compared to Neuromancer, when I re I've never seen it from that book when I read it so many years ago, but this one, I was hoping when I, as I read through this novel again, I would, um, scenes would jump out at me and I would remember uh, what what happens in this novel, but by the time I reached towards the end of this book, it became clear why I never read anything from this book, because I didn't like it. And this was a, a real disappointment um, f uh, for a sequel of William Gibson's Neuromancer. A little background, after uh, Gibson published uh, Neuromancer, it became such a hit that his publisher wanted a follow-up book, but he didn't want to, so what he ended up doing was, he ended up writing a book set in the same universe, but doesn't follow any of the characters from the first novel. And I really wish Gibson put more effort in, in, in when he wrote Count Zero because this was a really slow, really boring and un unexciting book. Like, two of the main characters are, are, are a mercenary and a hacker, and I expected th those two char expected these two characters to be exciting, interesting, but it was not. It was just very boring. My other problems with Count Zero was Willie Gibson was not painting a clear picture with his words very difficult to um, translate scenes of what was going on because he is not describing enough detail in the world. He's very brief with with, with scenes here and there and um, the characters as well. I'll explain more in my review on it. But first, onto, onto the plot of the novel. Plot. In New Delhi, India, American ex-soldier and mercenary Turner is nearly killed in a bomb blast during a job. He is rescued from his employer, known only as the Dutchman. After three months of recovery surgery in Singapore, Turner decides to retire and take a relaxing vacation in Mexico. While on the beach with a woman he's been hanging out with, Allison, Turner spots a yacht he recognizes and warns Allison to leave. When a speedboat comes ashore with the Hurasaka Corporation logo on it, three men get off the boat. Howard, Lynch, and Corey, all Merck Turner has worked with in the past. Corey recruits Turner for an extraction job and offers a lot of money to convince him to do one more job. Turner agrees and gets on the boat. Their mission is to help Christopher Mitchell escape from the Boss Biolabs and get him to the Harisaka base in Arizona desert. Mitchell is carrying a biochip, a technology superior to the nearly the ubiquitous silicone microprocessors. Moss Biolabs holds, holds the patients and secrets to biochip technology using extreme measures to ensure no, none of their secrets escape their labs. Kari also reveals that Allison was a field psychologist working for Hisaka to monitor Turner and help his recovery, which makes Turner suspicious of Kari. After planning it all out, getting the gear and weapons for the job, Turner and the others hit out for, for the mission. It goes horribly wrong with two of the mercs killed along with Christopher Mitchell. However, Turner is able to save his daughter, Angie, and escape from security forces. Turner suspects Corey as the traitor. Turner takes Angie to a house owned by Sally and his brother, Rudy, to lay it low for a bit and figure out what to, uh, f figure out what Turner is going to do with Angie along with tracking down Corey to find out why he and Harsaka want Angie so bad. Meanwhile, in Barrington, New Jersey, a young upcoming console cowboy, Bobby Newmark, who goes under the alias Count Zero, is given a piece of black market software by some criminal associates to test. When Bobby jacks into the Matrix and tests out the program, he is nearly killed from it. He is saved by a girl made out of light who interferes and unhooks him from the software just before he flatlines. Fearing for his life, Bobby flees his house, which is destroyed, and his mother is killed. He meets Lucas, Beauvoir, and Jackie, a group fascinated by and de dedicated to the recent appearances of voodoo entities in cyberspace. They take him in into their protection while being hunted down by various corporation agents while they teach Bobby tricks of the trade to ensure he becomes a highly skilled hacker. However, Bobby wants to know where this black market software came from, who hired him to test it out, and who is the girl made of light that saved his life. 
Unlike Gibson's first novel, Neuromancer, Count Zero was much more difficult to understand its world as it feels less detailed and is only brief with scenes. I felt like he was not painting a clear picture with his words. Characters were not well crafted and at times just felt boring. Neither Turner or Bobby didn't offer anything to make them, inter make them interesting characters. I expected more to come out of a merc and a hacker. Also, they lack personality as they really felt dull with no extra features added to them. And Gibson's third character, Mari Kroshova, was the most boring part of the novel. Her plot line dragged on the story, making its pacing slow and a chore just to read through it. And what her goal was doesn't make any sense. Traveling from Paris into space just didn't answer any questions I have while re re reading these scenes. And the ending was a, was a letdown. Very little action to excite the reader after going through all three plot lines. The only thing I was looking forward to with Count Zero was finishing, was finishing it because I had enough of it. Maybe that's why I don't remember anything with this novel, because it fails to offer more to the reader and improve any flaws from the previous novel. I felt Gibson went a step backwards than forward with Count Zero. I stated earlier in my review of Neuromancer that he didn't plan to write a sequel to his novel, but the publisher won one. And it shows, Gibson puts no effort into Count Zero, just types something that would please his publisher. If Gibson spent more time working on Count Zero and just focused the story on Turner and Bobby more and scrapped out Mara's scenes, along with adding more rich detail to the story, giving his characters more layers of personality, background, and putting more action into it, then Count Zero would have been a perfect sequel to Neuromancer. But sadly, it's not. It's just a dull, slow, and unexciting novel with no surprise waiting for you at the end. And that is it for the review of Count Zero. I did not enjoy it, so I won't be uh, hanging on to the book, nor reading the um, his third sequel to the Sprawl series, Mona Lisa Overdrive. I did not like that one either. But I will be reading William Gibson's uh, short stories in his collection, Burning Chrome. Then after that, I will be reading the other Sarpunk novels um, from the other offers. Um... That's it for the review today. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, please don't forget to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, October Library, along with the Facebook group of the same name, a place where you can post, share, and review fiction. Until then, I will catch you later. Bye.